And then some of y'all are really crazy. Y'all don't like Billy Holiday. Come on. Now. Mm-hmm. 
to get them through. And so now it becomes a, a place of entertainment. Uh, and when they done, uh, all we do is clap. But when you got an anointed person uh, who may not hit every note right, uh, who may not be in the right key, but have an anointed on their life, uh, they don't have to tell you, lift your hands, uh, but you feel the anointed connected with you and them and your hands.
the service. What is the service? It's because we got positions. I ain't talking about y'all because I heard y'all history. We got positions who think that service can't move unless they are. But the old folk down the country didn't have no musician. If they had a musician, it was an old rusty piano that was out of tune in the corner. But what they did have is they had their hands and their feet. I don't need no trouble, no keyboard player to move me into worship. If you're there, that's fine. But I can do it all by myself. Amen. Watch what it does. <laughs> you cannot be effective at creating an atmosphere of worship if, in fact, service starts at 11 mm -hmm. and you come in at 11. Oh. <laughs> Alright, you said say it again. You cannot be effective in ministry if service starts at 11 and you come in at 11.05. And now you come in and now you want to take control of the praise and worship when they already kicked things off. The devil is alive! probably didn't know I was a musician when he asked me to do this. So I'm talking from experience. And I can't even tell you, watch this. Uh, when you got those bougie and, and self-pushed and self-made uh, musicians uh, that can't, and it, you know what bothered me? Uh, you know what bothered me? I'm, I'm from the old school. Whenever I went into a church uh, and a musician wasn't there and there wasn't no musician, uh, I didn't ask the pastor, how much you gonna pay me? I walked myself up to the drums, uh, got on the drums and started playing. You can't get these rascals to play nothing unless you play. Boy, preach, I'm doing the best I can. Listen, listen there ought to be a moment before worship start, Pastor, that the musician ought to connect with the pastor so that the oil flows. Music, when we play, is to accompany mm. 
those who say it, I say it. Yeah. <laughs> 
atmosphere of worship and you up there letting your service start at 11, you up there 1045 and setting the atmosphere when people come in with their burdens because you in there setting the atmosphere, you're breaking up whatever burden they put in here because watch this, most of us, all of us are moved by music and when we hear music, we begin, God, I wish I had somebody in here. Listen, yesterday I was on Facebook and I'm going to talk about your pastor for a second. He was at, he was at the Soul Circus and he put a post on there that the 80s music was starting to come out real heavy, that his feet or his shoulder began to move. I come to tell you, sometimes all we need is some music to happen and we start moving, we start lifting our hands, but when you set the atmosphere, Said this. Said, Listen, because of their choice of song, it says, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Alright, y'all really miss your shout. He says, because they sung in unison with the words and the music. Presence of the Lord fill the house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, Pastor, you 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 know, you and I know. We've been in church a long time. I'm quite sure some of y'all been in church. There's a long way, a lot longer. You know when the atmosphere of the songs right. is in order because right. there has been times at Christian Center where the song and the music has been so much in order that I could not preach in the yeah. And in fact, and I know some of y'all ain't gonna do this, there's been times, Pastor, that I couldn't even take up an offering. I just set a basket after the Holy Ghost had finished in the sanctuary, set a basket and say, y'all just put your tithes in here. There's been times, watch this, because the problem that we have is that whenever we stand and try to outdo God's presence, we always mess stuff up. But my pastor told me when God comes in, let him his son, you sit down in your seat and let God have his way because there's nothing you can do more greater than when God shows. Yeah. 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 Watch this. So now he comes in and he, he's, he's filled the place. his glory yeah. on this side yeah. while this side is watching you be delivered be set free and be healed and they now come out of worship and say it didn't take all of that yes baby it took that plus some more because you don't know where God brought me from you don't know what I've been into you don't know where he's had to snatch me out is there anybody in the house glad for his glory Pastor, thank you. <laughs> so it says, listen, when you set the atmosphere, and when you invoke in the presence of God, you create the atmosphere mm -hmm. of the presence of God's glory. Mm. And, and watch this. And though then what happens is, and see, can I really be honest with you? We really have this thing backwards. Mm. We say praise and worship. It should be praise and worship. Or worship and praise. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. Because, because yeah. what you do is when you worship, That's it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. it allows you to see God yeah. and who he is. And so when you in worship, your hands are lifted. Uh -huh. And the Bible says, whenever he comes yeah. into worship, whatever you need, he brings it because yeah. you invoked him, you invited him yeah. into the presence. 
mountains. And now our praise is we praise God for what we experience in worship. Yeah. Is there anybody in the house, but I 